Welcome everyone to episode 318 of Aussie Tech Heads. How are you going this week? It's another week, another fun-filled week of tech news, and we're going to bring it all to you, all the important stuff anyway. And uh, we are coming to you every week from the, the generous sub-team of the uh, Aussie Tech Heads hosting. That's right. You can get some fast Australian hosting from us. Uh, at very reasonable, affordable prices. Professionally run system, all on safe, secure servers in uh, Sydney. So uh, it's fast, fast, fast. So uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting. Go and check it out. All right, now, Aussie Tech Heads, we come to you live every Thursday night at 8. No, not 8.30, 7.30. 8.30 New South Wales, 7.30 Queensland. And uh, work the rest out for yourselves. And just before the show at 7 o'clock, uh, we normally have the replay of Tech Webcast. You can check that uh, podcast out if you want to, wish to subscribe to it at te- techwebcast.info. So go and check that out. Had a uh, great guest on just before tonight's show, uh, some guy from Zbox about a new television revolutionary thing. So it sounds pretty good. So uh, I'd check out Zbox and also check out those other guys. Now, uh, that's right, Thursday night, 7.30, uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live, and uh, or just go to the, the web page and suss us out. Now, also, we're joined tonight. We have uh, we have no Eric. Eric is busy doing other eric things, and tonight, filling in his big shoes is Frosty, and Frosty from Tasmania. How you going, Frosty? Yeah, good, Glenn. How's yourself? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Now, uh, Frosty, you're from Tasmania, so we're really... Uh, Getting really national now, aren't we? We've got guests over in Perth, or hosts in Perth. <laughs> international and, nearly. Oh, that's right. We need an international uh, host, don't we? <laughs> yes. Now, uh, what have you been up to the, lately since we last saw you, Frosty? I know you're in the, in the lounge every, every week, but uh, we haven't seen you on yep. the screen for a while. So um, just working hard, doing the normal, normal Frosty things. Yep. Good. Yeah, I'll just uh, <laughs> keep my head down and try and stay out of trouble. Good. Not drive by too much tech. <laughs> that's the way. Oh, that's right. I remember last week uh, I had a had a look at your little uh, lounge, or just off uh, after the show we hooked up, and I saw all that tech behind you, uh, all your empty boxes and so forth. So um, old motherboard boxes. Oh, you love it. You love it, and that's good. So do we. <laughs> so do we. And uh, and also Will and Shane, those guys are around here somewhere too. Hello, Shane. How you doing? Hey, good. Everyone, how's everyone? Yeah, good. Now, Shane, he, you're from Perth. Now, you've got some wild weather going on over there, I hear. Yeah, I was um, nearly a no-show tonight. I, um, we had no internet. We had no power. The internet came back this afternoon. Um, oh, dear. It's been an interesting 24, 48 hours for me. I had the uni exam this morning. And, and your fence blew away or something? Oh, yeah, the fence went down. Um, what else has happened? Well, you know, that the uh, you most... name and it's just been shocking. The most important thing, the most important question that everyone wants to ask you tonight, and I'll ask it for everyone, has the weather cleared? Is the cricket on tomorrow? For I Pontings, the, for Punter's last stand, is, is the cricket on? I believe the cricket's on tomorrow. The weather will be oh. fine tomorrow. It's going to be kind of overcast. It might still be a little bit blowy. Um, and then by the weekend, it'll be you know, like high 20s, fine. Yeah, it'll be regular should, Perth weather. Good. We should have got you to actually uh, sink the key in. We should we should have done that. Get a little <laughs> get the key test going, eh? <laughs> For the show tonight. But anyway, could have done. Yeah. Maybe next time. <laughs> next week, yep. the one day are in the over at the Wacker. We'll do it then. And yeah, Will, absolutely. <laughs> How you going, Will? Not too bad yourself. Yeah. Good. Thanks. So many batteries today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get that question every week, don't you? It's just every week. Uh, you, you sell on batteries or what? Actually, what's kind of annoying is that we rely on this cold to hot period. This is where batteries start to fail because it's hard on them. The problem is everybody's being so tight that nobody's replacing their batteries. And they're, they're, I actually did one for a guy today. He's been putting his battery on the charger every night when he gets home for about the last month because he can't. Be, <laughs> he doesn't want to replace it just yet. Oh, what, so, his, his car battery? Yeah. He oh. comes home every day after work and puts it on the charger and then... Is he kidding? <laughs> oh, mate. I, I hope he's listening to the podcast. I just want to ask him, are you kidding yourself? <laughs> just get a new battery. Get one off wheel. What are they? 130 bucks? How much is a new battery? Uh, standard heavy duty Commodore battery is 149. Oh, I was close. I was close. Get it. Get it. Well, 130 will get you a battery that'll fit in your cube. Oh, good. That's what we want. It'd take a little uh, a motorcycle battery, wouldn't it? No, no. Surprisingly. Oh, a big one. Do you know where they're located in the cube? Yes. 
Uh, under the where are they? No, under the bonnet. That's right. What was funny about the cube? I think it was where the the jack was located. It was under the under the front seat carpet or something. <laughs> Must be uh, mine. We have to go and make sure I've got one. All right. But anyway, <laughs> don't talk about the cube. The cube. Some parts the... of hold it up for a minute while you change the tire. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Now, uh, uh, just before we go on, are you able just to turn your little mic up a bit, Will? You've, you've gone all soft on us for some I reason. Soft. You it's have. It's too hot. Hey? It's too hot. It I might be too hot. Me. Is that better? Oh, that's good. Yes, thank you. Right, yeah. Yep, cool. Cool. All right, well, uh, let's get cracking. Will's lost his show notes, so he's going to just <laughs> fly by the seat of his pants tonight. And uh, so, well, look, I'll... Um, well, what else have I got to say? I'll start off. I've got, I've got a story here. And it's about the Gangnam Style becomes YouTube's most viewed video. Can you believe it? I looked at this video uh, a week ago. You know, I put it on the show, the show The Kids and it was up to 330 million. And so it just, just goes to show you that once, oh, as if 330 is not the tipping point, but once it hits a, hit the 10th the tipping point, it just goes uh, insane. So it's notched up more than 808 million views since it was posted in July. So apparently it pokes fun at consumerism of Gangnam, an affluent suburb of the South Korean capital in Seoul. Now this Gangnam style, which won best video at this year's MTV Europe Music Awards, has also been number one in 28 countries. It's just gone fanatical, hasn't it? It holds the Guinness World Records for the most liked song ever, currently with a little under 5.4 million likes on YouTube. Previously, Bieber, Justin Bieber's 2010 hit Baby, which I've probably never, ever heard myself. So has anyone here heard Baby? Baby, 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 <laughs> oh. I don't know if it was that one. That was, that was uh, I think that was Shane renditioning there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a bit, that's, I don't know what baby is. But anyway, it held, it previously held the record for the most YouTube views. But now Bieber's manager, Scooter Braun, oh, he's got to be a good guy. And he with the first name, Scooter, uh, was the first per I wonder if he's got those little eyes inside the, his glasses. But anyway, uh, he uh, was the first person in the US to tweet a link to the Gangnam Style video. Well, he holds the record for being number one thing <laughs> I won't say the word. Number it's one in my viewer. Head. <laughs> That's right. All right. Oh, what's happened? Hang on. My, my Google Hangout has just refreshed. But here we go. We're going to pick him up again in a second. They'll just uh, talk amongst yourselves until we do until they come back into the Hangout. Well, I've got to tell you that the there's a paper that comes out. We punch out twice a day. Uh, you can find That's that cool. at uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper. If you want to have a look at that on your iPad and on your uh, wherever you want to do it, on your desktop, well, blah, 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 wherever. And I think we're back. We're back into the – yes, we are back into the Hangout. I don't know what happened then. It went crazy. How's, how's our audio? Have we still got audio? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Good. <laughs> good. All right. Now, and two Glens. I know. There is two of me down the bottom. You can't get enough wow. of me. I'm, I've, I've split. <laughs> the good Glen and the bad Glen. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, one of them will go away in a minute. Let's hope it's the bad one. Now, um, who who else has got a story? Who else wants to have a bit of a throw? Oh, there, there's the bad one. He went, he left. You went. <laughs> uh, the, all right. Um, reading a story on. We all know Facebook's got its, uh, you know, its censorship policy and and things like that. Um, there's a. I'm just just reading an article now about how, what was the actual, uh, there's a magazine, they actually don't name the magazine, which is odd. Yes, uh, it was uh, uh, Theories of the Deep Understanding of Things. Is, as was an experiment to... Really, an experiment to test the social media network, yeah. Uh, so basically, the photo itself didn't show, didn't depict any actual nudity. Um, it was basically a chick in the bath with her arms up on the inside of the bath. Um... And it appears at first glance that it's her breast, but obviously it doesn't take very long to figure out that that's not really possible. Well, um, I, didn't, I didn't get that. First glance, I thought it was, I did think it was her elbows. I never, but then, uh, not until I read the story, was it then I started, I read what it was supposed to be or, you know, why it was taken down. I went, oh, okay, yeah, right, I can see that. Yeah. 
Um, so basically, it's reported in the magazine this morning on its Facebook page. Site moderators quickly removed the picture for violation of content guidelines. Facebook moderators, I love the way they've written this. Facebook moderators can't tell an elbow from a dangerous, filthy, uncanny, and violent female breast. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's how it appears, isn't it? So, um, um, yeah. Sorry, keep going. And of course, to to top things off, uh, pun the pun. <laughs> the, they've um, had a lot of issues with uh, breastfeeding, and because there's actually you know breastfeeding support groups and things like that, and they're having a lot of problems with um, with Facebook removing posts and shutting down support groups, which you know it's is crazy. A bit rude. Because look, I um I pulled this story out as well, but just because. I just thought it's it's just it's a cra- one of those crazy crazy stories, like because now here here's the pi- the picture of the girl with her elbows up on the side of the bath. Now so obviously it's a, a bot that's gone through and says okay now that looks too much like uh, that that lady's breast, so they've taken it down just like that, just overnight. Snap snap your fingers, take it down, no questions asked, just, you know, and didn't even tell you know blah blah blah. But now I've pulled out three more little stories that have happened over the, the, the say, the last 12 months, okay? You know, this is probably three of many. And this is where it starts to get frustrating for me. Or not, you know, I don't really get frustrated, but the, the, I, I just, I'm, I'm against how they, I, how they work their things over there at Facebook. Now, Friday, September 30, 2011. So just remember, keep in mind, the girls' elbows, they were down in two seconds. Now, 30 September 2011, Facebook refuses to take down rape jokes pages. Okay, so they're, they've taken down the, they're not taking down rape jokes. They've taken down the elbows. Now, in October 2nd 2012, Facebook refuses to take to take down hate page targeting alleged murderer. Okay, so that's all right. That's better than elbows. So you got elbows gone, and you got you got rape jokes. And a hate page. Now, August 21st, 2012, Facebook refuses to take down a pedophile page. Apparently, the, the elbows are no go. They are no go. Whatever happens, elbows, nah. Or breasts, nah. Can't do any of that. But do whatever Shirts else you on, want. Shirts on, please, ladies. Yeah, but does, that, does anyone else find that that's just, just crazy? It's just crazy. Just like, case, the, the sexists out there are complaining. Don't worry. It takes down man boobs, too. <laughs> but they're just disgusting. <laughs> no, no one wants to see. Will you, will I don't know one wants to see. again, Will. <laughs> I don't know. One wants to see mine anyway. Yeah, I know. See. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, that's right. But anyway, I, I look. I haven't had any photos taken down, Will. I must have. I must have slipped through the net. <laughs> yeah, I haven't either. Um, I, I think. I don't know. I. It has to get initial reaction in great numbers, I think. Like, if three people look at it, they're not going to care. Um, but if a picture suddenly gets 25,000 likes, they're going to go, well, hang on, what is it? And then they look at it. So I think it's... I mean, obviously, it's an automated script. Um, but, yeah, I think that there's a lot to be desired. They need to uh, work with Google a bit to get Google's algorithm because their picture search seems to work. Mm. Much more reliably. So, well, I remember I had my my own photos up on the Microsoft SkyDrive right now, which is ooh, a more private sort of a space. Now, it just happened to be that I hadn't shared these photos with anyone. I just had uploaded them just as a backup service, and I got emails, and uh, they they told me I had to take take certain photos down within a period of uh, fourteen days or something. They were pictures of. Um, uh, say my, my little girl when she was a baby in the bath. I was having, I was bathing her, and there was a picture of her. And because she was nude, the the bot obviously he having a bath. So the, and the bot picked it up, and Microsoft they told me to take it down, otherwise they close the account. So it, it can really? go. Yes, yes. I would have told them to go jump. I'm going to close my account and I'll go to Google Drive or some Dropbox or someone else because mm. that's ridiculous. Yeah, I know it, it's getting a bit like that. And uh, look, because I, I think I did actually have another. Yes, I did have another story about ridiculous stuff. Like this is this is the place is just going a bit crazy. Now, as if, uh, you know, you, you think the government would have a, a lot of things on their plate at the moment. You know, there, there's I don't know whatever there is going on, or you know, Telstra, the MBN, and you know, the public housing, the education, the policing, and look how many how many shootings are there in Sydney? Like, geez, they got they got things on their mind. But 
one of the top top priorities apparently is Australians gripe, the Australian government gripes about negative top level domain proposals. Now, governments around the world have lodged complaints about a wide variety of propose, proposals for the new top level internet domains. So, what these are, uh, like the dot coms. So, what's happened is the ICANN have decided they would sell off top level domains. So you can you could buy whatever you wanted. So the national bank might want to buy dot nab, or um, you know the Commonwealth dot cba or whatever you know Hugh Hefner dot sex things like that. You can make your own up. So anyway, Australia is the country behind the largest number of complaints by a wide margin. It took offence to sucks so dot sucks because the string has an overtly negative or critical connotation and gave, and gave the same reason why it thinks uh, .wtf, gripe and fail should not be allowed to become top-level domains. It also warned that casino should be denied because the applicants for the domain name do not appear to have proposed sufficient mechanisms to minimise potential consumer harm. So this is madness. A, a company that probably isn't too happy about the warnings is Amazon because app, book, cloud, game, movie and a number of its other suggested domains have all drawn the, uh, the ire of, of the Australian government. So what's, what app, book and cloud, what's going on here? The disputed domains were among the 1,930 for which applicants were released in June. Like, what is happening? Oh, you know, ha haven't we got better things to do than worry about this rubbish? This is rubbish. This is this is. I think rubbish. they're um. I think they're worried about Eric buying Labor dot suck or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Could be too, but there was. Well, I mean, they allow things like dot triple X. Yeah. You know, which is clearly adult site. I mean, why else would you have? Oh, that or a illegal distilling company? One of the two. I mean. <laughs> but I know. You know like, I don't these people have better things to do? Like govern the country for, for to to get us, you know, to make us economical. Don't, don't govern the country. Go away. Well, <laughs> or pro provide the mechanisms for us to to be more productive. Not not this is crap. Oh, this is rubbish. Yeah. And uh, wasn't it some some law came out today uh, or yesterday about how you can't doctor the photos of politicians? So apparently, some someone drew uh, Peter Slipper with a, a rat on his head. You know, like a rat's head instead of his head, and then you know the the government has done this media review of media bias and all this sort of stuff, and uh, and and now you're not allowed to to depict a, a politician in any other manner except the true its true form. Yeah, that one will never hold up, and that one will never get through. It won't get won't be able to hold up in court because it's it's you know freedom of of rights, freedom of expression. Mm. That's artistic. It's creative. They they got mm. no nothing. But they, they can. That's what annoys me. They've they got to the point, they're stupid enough to implement laws that override other laws. Now, the, the, as you know, the 1st of November, they implemented the law saying that it is now illegal to be, hold a phone in your hand at all, um, on, the, on your lap, anything. You're not allowed to touch your phone at all other than to pass it to your passenger. While you're driving. While you're driving, yeah. It's perfectly acceptable to put it into a cradle and stick it on your windscreen and use it that way. Um, now, in their own legislation, it says it is illegal to have anything in your field of view. So they're saying we don't, you know, that's right. Yeah, you're that's not right. allowed to hold it, but mm. you're allowed to put it in your field of view, even though you're not allowed to put it in your field of view. And, and what? And what about having a fag in the car? That's that's taking up one hand, isn't it? Right. Well, it's, it's technically. You mean the smoke? <laughs> yes, Will. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Just checking. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Yeah, it's the same as you're not... Well, actually, if you've got a kid in the car, you're not allowed to smoke now either. They've, they've changed that as well. Um, but you're technically not allowed to be distracted, so you're not allowed to have... Um, you're not allowed to drink, like water. You're not allowed to eat. You're not allowed to basically be distracted in any way yeah. yeah and you're not and the other thing is you're not allowed to use your gps whilst driving and yet it's perfectly acceptable to use your phone as long as it's in cradle in front of you blocking your view from the road yeah look oh look i, I don't actually disagree with the the rule about not touching your phone um it is very like strict um uh, but but you know people i have an issue 
I have an issue with it insofar as for my line of work, it improves my productivity because the boss sends me a message. I quickly flick it open, look at the message and go, oh, yeah, that's where I need to be. And then when I get to the street, sometimes I'll have a look at it again to go, this is a number I need to, to be at. Yeah, but... So, but but people were people were you but people were texting as they were driving. Yeah, no, I, dri- I realise that. I That's you shouldn't be able to do that. But mm. the thing is, the the government has to realise that you can't legislate against stupidity. No. They keep trying, and That's there's right. actually there's actually a subclass of rules that are called the idiot laws, mm. um, things such as you know you can't text while driving, uh, you can't have your arm out the window. Yeah, you know, these are actually classed as idiot laws, and they're brought in to protect idiot from the, from themselves. Yeah, so, and yeah. and because I've noticed, especially around here, like we used to have, you know, a couple of intersections say turn left, or like it would actually be a you would on a different road. It's not just at the traffic light, but you would the the road would go straight. The a part of the, the another part of the road would go left and then join like a like a ramp, but it wasn't a ramp, but it was like yeah. a ramp, but onto the road. Now, and there was no traffic light there. You could just do it. You had to look to your right, make sure nothing was coming, and you went. But now they've put up a traffic an arrow to say when it's it's okay to go straight ahead into the. You know, it's just re- it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And there's too there's too much in of it. Brisbane, in m- Brisbane, they've got most of the roundabouts have traffic lights on them. On oh, roundabouts, is it? A- yeah, well, most of the major roundabouts, the one at uh, Indrapelli, for example, has got traffic lights on it. Now, is it a roundabout or is it a set of traffic lights? Mm. <laughs> it can't be both. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> stupid, stupid. But anyway, anyway, we're getting off the track. So let, let's, let's bring us back on track. Frosty, can you bring us back on track, please? <laughs> I've got something. a story for you. <laughs> yes. Gmail. Oh. They have now um, integrated Google Drive into Gmail, allowing you to send files of up to 10 gigabytes cool. instead of the 25, 25 megabyte limit they used to have. Yeah, right. Was I, 25 meg was it? I thought it might have been about 10. I think that could be uh, Big Pond. I think they might have a 10 meg. But that's good. All right. Yeah, so... Yeah. Well, usually, usually most, most um, uh, pop used to be about 9 megabyte, 10 megabyte. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, well, that's good. good. That's good. Uh, yeah, 10 gig. Gee, that's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> I think um, that's a lot. My, I think my Gmail at the moment uh, has a limit of 10 gigabytes. Is actually what the storage is. Well, I'm just going to have a look at mine right now. And I can... I was, well, mine's actually 15, but you're right. 10 gigs the standard. Or, but I think seven. I suppose it seven. depends on when you joined. Yeah. Well, I pay five bucks a year to get an extra. I think it's uh, 20 gig, I think, because of um, I've got photos up on Picasa and I use it, just upload them oh, up there. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm using 8 gig of a la- allowed 30 gig. Yeah, so the yep. other, yeah, so about, uh, oh, what's that? Yeah, 22, yeah, whatever. That's a lot, but that's good. <laughs> that's good. I could send my whole, and apparent- <laughs> yeah, I could send my whole photos through an email. Cool. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> Microsoft. Um, pro- uh, was about a month ago. Yeah, they um re-released um Outlook dot com, and yep. they've integrated um SkyDrive into that as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, right, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So there's a bit, yeah, a bit of a bit of this going on, a bit of that going on there. Now you also had another little Microsoft story. We might as well do that while you're there. Yeah, uh, Microsoft about, about Windows Eight. Was that you? Windows 8 has sold 40 million copies of, um, or 40 million Windows 8 licenses in the first month have been released. Yeah, that's a few, isn't it? By the truckload. It is. Licenses by the truckload. <laughs> <laughs> have any of you guys upgraded to Windows 8 yet? Uh, sadly, no. <laughs> but, um, no, not yet. No, look, I've been meaning to go and get myself I, before I upgrade uh, my my main system. I want to, I just, I want to put it onto a, an SSD. So I've got to go and buy one first. Uh, look, I did put it on my laptop, and yeah, look, it worked okay. I've got no problems with it. I, I, I've got no issues with upgrading. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. It's just time, and I just got to go and get this SSD first. That's all. Have you okay. upgraded, Frosty? No, no, I'm still on Windows Seven. Right? Are you going to upgrade? Um, I might go and buy a copy before it yeah. 
supposedly goes back up in price. Yeah, well, that's around January. about January sometime, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, all right. And what about uh, Shane? I thought I'd give it a bit of time. Yeah, so I was going to say, Shane, he's getting a new computer, so it'll probably have Windows 8 on it. No, I'm not getting um, an operating system with it. I'm just going to chuck my copy of Windows 7 on it, but I'll probably use Windows 8 as like a um, a virtual machine or something. Oh, yeah. So you're going to go like Frosty, go and buy the the Windows 8 before it increases in price? I will, uh, I will acquire it somehow. Okay. <laughs> uh, will, what are you doing with Windows 8? Um, I'm going to, well, actually just have got, on Monday I actually went and bought the upgrade from uh, oh, you Harvey went? Norman, I think. Oh, yeah. It wasn't Harvey Norman. It was, where did I get it from? JB. Someone. It was uh, 45 bucks for the upgrade, so that's all right. I went and got that. So I went to Harvey Norman to get it. No, that's right. Harvey Norman was 45 because I went to Officeworks to get it and they wanted 70 um, Ooh, so I, well, I thought it was a standard price. Yeah, so tight. So I went to Harvey Norman and got it for 45 I don't know. I think it's but, $50 um, off um, Microsoft's website, isn't it? Yeah. yeah so yeah. I went and got a copy of it, but I haven't, um, haven't bothered to do anything with it because I haven't got a system that's stable enough yet. Um, but just out of curiosity, we were talking last week about, well, I think I mentioned it, about the crack that allowed you to, uh, you could illegally download a copy of, of Windows 8 and then legally download the legit copy of Media Center. That's right. And uh, it would automatically it register. Automatically register. And it worked. So, because I thought I'd give that a go. Just, I got an old, an old didn't one. actually intend on running Windows 8 on it because it's an old system and runs it. <laughs> it was hardly, it only just managed to run the install. So, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd try it and it worked. And so, yeah. Hmm, good. But apparently, uh, according to a story I was reading, and I can't find it because I can't find anything, um, Windows 8, or somebody else might already have this story, I'm not sure, but apparently now they're going to be uh, authenticating it. Here we go. I just come, just found it. Um, they're changing the way they're authenticating um, Windows. Apparently right. it's going to be done off BIOS now. Mm. And apparently like that's, uh, yeah. uh, that's uh, not, not, no, not new technology. <laughs> But uh, I think there's no, not going to be any authentication keys as such. Uh, or, and there's, there's Is no... that the? Um, there was a yeah. story going around a couple of months ago. It was about uh, people that use Linux. Yeah. How they couldn't authent. Um, it's in uh, was it UE, UEFI or whatever the oh, new file that... else is. Right, right. There was a um, Microsoft uh, were putting something wanted to put something into the into the BIOS that could only lock it so that you could use Windows 8 only. Oh, I did hear something about that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And so that was like for OEM versions and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the manufacturer versions. Yeah, well, I can't um, see how that's going to happen. New Windows computers will no longer have a certificate of authenticity sticker on the outside of the computer. Buyers will have to use software tools to discover their product keys. Um... Which is Apparently, not a big deal, but it's just another bit of a problem, isn't well, it, if you need well, it? Users wanting to do a clean reinstallation of Windows are complaining they cannot find the product key and therefore unable to activate their legitimate, legitimately purchased operating systems. Um, one of the improvements Microsoft is making in Activation 3 for newly built machines that came preloaded with Windows, you won't have a COA sticker. Instead, you'll, it will be embedded to the BIOS just to avoid product keys from being... So, that's lovely. I upgrade my motherboard and I can no longer run Windows. Yeah, thanks, Microsoft. Another <laughs> reason not use your product. Oh, look, that's not going to be as cutthroat. I don't believe it'll be as cutthroat as that. Surely not. Surely not. You might have to... Well, if your mother's... Yeah, I don't know. Surely not. But anyway. It says computer manufacturers have been able to write product keys to the BIOS since Windows 7 and Activation 2.1, um, but the sticker still had to be affixed to the computers. Mm. And Activation 3 does away with the stickers. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Other reason not why Windows, I suppose. Yeah. yeah a lot uh, of the uh, computers, they used to put the sticker on the power brick, and if your power brick ended up, yeah. <laughs> you know, blowing up or something, you replaced it, yeah. you threw it out, and there goes your sticker. That's right. <laughs> How does it work, I wonder, if you're running a virtual machine? I'll tell you in a couple of weeks. 
<laughs> All right. Well, we'll hang out for that. Now, uh, Shane, what what else, what have you got? You've got some stories there. What where do you want to start? Start this week. I'll start at the top and go with the go back to Facebook. Yes. There was a uh, story where it looks like someone's somehow managed to log in under the uh, Jetstar account or they've created like a fake Jetstar account. Um, it goes on to say, Jetstar has landed in the middle of a PR disaster as an internet hoaxer hijacked its Facebook page and started snapping at customers. Customers of the budget airline were left confused and angry when anonymous prankster registered on Facebook under the name Jetstar Australia and using the airline's official logo began rudely responding to their queries on the company's official web page. And examples are, uh, this is a comment box, not a ride along story box. Please shorten it and send it to someone who cares. Um, <laughs> There's another one, the one I just flashed up on the video, some guys complaining about whatever, and Jetstar Australia's responding, goes, hi, Frank, um, have, you, have you ever heard of giving, it, giving up? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, he's re- this Dead Star show is right on it. So what was the what was the outcome of that? Anything like did they manage to shut it down? Do you know, or is he is he still g- giving them grief? No, they managed to get control of it back, and they've um, you know, oh good good apologised profusely, and they've kind of gone to the great lengths to sort of say it wasn't us. <laughs> oh, well, Facebook will take down. Fake accounts too. It's elbows and now and fake accounts, but but rape, yeah. hate, and and pillage accounts. They're they're all right to keep going. And, uh, accounts with uh, not real, not your real name. If they find out that's not your real name, they'll shut your account as well. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's oh boohoo. <laughs> Have you got any of those, Will? No. Name. Okay. <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, uh, look, here's a little app that you might want to have a look at uh, for, for all you parents out there. It's a missing child app. Now, it's uh, being put out similar to the app that apparently the FBI had put out. And uh, this one's put out by our, uh, our uh, AFP, and it's, a, it's an Australian, Australian app. So it's in the iTunes store. Now, it's, uh, the application helps users safely store and update photographs and vital information about children on your phone. So it also allows international information to be shared. So it's available for free, iPhone and Android. Uh, so go and check that app out. Now, what the, uh, the app is called... Oh, I didn't actually copy that down, but it's in the show notes. But, uh, but yeah, look, hang on, I'll put it on my phone, actually. it would be one of the last ones I... Um I did. So look, I had a bit look, quick look at it. It uh, you know, looked all right. It's called Child Police Child ID. Police Child ID. It's in the App Store I, from the Apple App Store. That's where I got mine from. And yeah, so you put up like current a current photo of your kitty or whatever. So in the in the dreadful circumstance that your child does go missing, uh, then you've got all the data there. You've got a current photo. You've got the information that the, the police need to try get on the on the trail fast. So it's not a it's not a it's not a bad app by the look of it. Um, look, I've got a little little photo there. That's just someone using it. So uh, look, that was launched this week. So look, go and check that one out. It's probably uh, probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. Um, Frosty, what else have you got? What else have I got? What else have you got going over there? Down there. How's the weather down there? Is it warming up? <laughs> yeah, it has been warming up. It's about twenty two degrees, hmm. twenty one degrees. And is that is that the height yeah. the, the height of summer? Is it down there? In Tassie? Uh, no, nah, it'll probably get up around 30. Oh, yeah. What are you going to do then? Uh, turn you'll, a fan on. You'll, you'll melt. <laughs> There'll be no more frosty. Spend more time at, spend more time at work. Yep. Oh, no. Working in, the, working in the cool store. Oh, yeah. All right. So what else have you got? Uh, Google. Another Google story. Yeah. Apparently, uh, they released a new phone f- for the Android handsets. Uh, the Google... Was it uh, Nexus 4? Oh, Was yes. Was a fortnight ago? Yes. And uh, I'm not sure if you've reported on it, but the the app, the store where they're selling it um, has... Nothing. <laughs> it has... Uh, they, they had trouble selling the item. Yeah, so apparently that, you, you went into the Google Play Store and uh, it was out of stock. I said, come back at 
uh, this according to the, the, the writer of this particular article, you know, come back at 3 o'clock, 3 a.m. or something, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be back open for business. So he come back at 3 a.m. on the dot, and he got all the way to the uh, checkout stage, and it's gone unforeseen circumstances, popular demand, we're, we're out again. So he wasn't a happy camper. But, um, but so it looks like that, you know, they're, they're just having a bit of trouble trying to sell their own stock for some reason, which, you know... Well, you know, probably over, under supply. That, I mean, look at that price, two ninety nine. That's amazing. Did you see... No, they're actually having um, server crashes. Mm. As too many people are trying to get on there and buy it at one time. And okay. so when they're, um, when they're proceeding to the checkout, they can't uh, go and yeah, press okay. the, the well, final button. Why, why doesn't Apple have this problem? Or do they? Uh, Apple, I think they do have a bit of a problem sometimes. Like, they might just route their, they may be just route back to a static page somewhere saying, well, we're out, see you later. But, uh, Apple so, stuff uh, isn't cheap enough. Yeah, they don't have <laughs> the problem. <laughs> but, uh, a lot of it's pre-orders too, so. Yeah, but in any case, so, so it's, it's pretty hard to get one of these little Nexus things. But just as a, as a side note, did you see this week at Audi, there's a sub... One hundred dollar Android tablet? Was it a hundred dollars? I'm not sure. That was pretty cheap though. I'm pretty sure it was hundred. It was one of Coles too for like eighty nine or something as well. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, once again, with one of those before you buy, it, do, do your due diligence. Make sure that it's the it's right for you because only sixteen gig, as far as I know. So, um, yeah. So yeah, there's no. Exp- you can't put a micro SD card in it at all. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so you're stuck with. If you want the eight gig, there's an eight gig model, and if you want sixteen, that's what you're limited to. Mm. All right, now uh, Shane, you got something, some news on Nintendo? They're launching something. Yeah, Nintendo are um are still around apparently. Uh, the first new game console in six years will go on sale in Australia at midnight tonight, and we're not going to have the whole time zone conversation again. Good. And <laughs> <laughs> and <It's> midnight. Re- <laughs> <laughs> and retailers are already predicting that widespread sellouts and pre-Christmas scrambling to start this weekend. Nintendo's Wii U console, which features a new tablet-like controller and high-definition graphics, will be move the mouse out of the way. Will be fated at, uh, fated at midnight and launches around the country in stores, including EB Games, Kmart, and JB Hi-Fi. But EB Games Managing Director Steve Wilson says the ability to purchase one of the new consoles is already limited as the game chain has been filling pre-orders for months. So it doesn't look like a bad little machine, does it? Look, I've just fly, threw a picture up there. It just it looks like obviously you can play your game on the TV wirelessly. It's a, so is it like a little handheld game machine as well as like a remote? Like as a remote? Yeah. It's kind of like, from what I can gather, it's like, you know those DSs, how you got like your double screen, but yeah. in this case, your double your double screen is like your TV, oh, and then you got your console, and I believe there's games out that also you can actually put the thing on the ground, and that becomes like the, the ball on the ground, if you like, with a golf game and things like that. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. Now, also... It's actually a... Uh a separate game console in its own right as well, so you can actually play a game just on the handheld. Oh, okay. Right. But you have to have the uh, main uh, unit on. Yeah, but the... Yeah, that's it. That's a separate... It's basically, it's its own gaming machine, and then once you come back and p- put the game back into the, the actual main console, you do, like, mini-games and stuff that build up levels. It's like what the uh, Sega Dreamcast was... It was basically the same as that. The problem with the Dreamcast was it was 10 years too early because it was pretty much the exact same thing. It was its own independent. Each controller was the own game, you know. Mm. Now, um, now, Adelaide, apparently, Shane, is getting some free Wi-Fi as well. That's cool. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll just go down to that. Um, free order, free outdoor, rather. Free outdoor Wi-Fi is set to be rolled out across Adelaide City Centre by the end of the next year in an, uh, in an Australian First, although I found that a bit hard to believe, but anyway. Well, isn't um, it, the, down, is it Australian First for what capital cities? Because I think there isn't uh, free Wi-Fi going down Bondi as well, or do you have to pay for that? There's some free Wi-Fi going on. It's going on everywhere. 
I think yeah, it's I mean, I know parts of Perth have got it, but I think this is done, I think this is the first, as in, like, this is the first government-funded or something like that. Oh, right, okay, yep. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. The goes, sta- yeah, State Government and, and Adelaide City Council have unveiled plans to provide the free high-speed in, high internet access in public areas. Yeah, cool, yeah. cool. All right, cool. Now, um, now, Frosty, I, I saw you had a little story about Angry Birds. We all love Angry Birds. What's 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 news yes, with those little? Yes, everyone loves Angry Birds. What's news with those little over dudes? In, over in, um, where is it? Uh, Finland. Oh yeah. They've got a drink cool. with the Angry Birds, <laughs> and apparently they've been outselling Coke and Pepsi. Yeah, right. the kids love it. For, I, don't know. I don't know about the drink, oh, yeah. but the Angry Birds I love. So now if you get a slingshot, find a couple of pigs, you can go out and play Angry Birds. <laughs> yeah, <Awesome. look. laughs> Oh, that's great. Look, oh, I've got my, but, my young bloke, you know, there's the stuffed toys, Angry Bird toys. Yeah, he loves them. Loves them. They're great. They're great. Um, yes. Well, the best bit is yes, that oh, they're actually um, about to bring the drinks out in Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> oh, good stuff. What do they taste like? What, what, hang, where's yeah, that, where's uh, that graphic I had? I had a, was there flavours on there? Uh, there was one in the flavors. article that said Tropic. Oh, yeah, Tropic. It looked like yeah. another one they're going to call Lagoon. Paradise. Another one, Paradise. I can't read that what first one. Comet. 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 Oh, Space that Comet. Space Comet. <laughs> tastes like rocks. Right, is that going to be like cola and uh, space candy? <laughs> tastes like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, um, what else have we got? What else um, what have okay. you got, Will? What do you reckon would be 20 years old this year. 20 years ago, a device that revolutionised the world that we use every day was invented. Are you it ready? was called... I've got something about that. The IBN Simon. Does oh, that help? Oh, simple Simon. No. Yes, it does yeah, help. basically. <laughs> and there it is. Yeah. That's it. It's the, it's the it world's... the world's smartphone. Um... It was rolled out on November 23rd, 1992 at Comdex. It was code, uh, it likely wouldn't fit in your pocket because it was about the same size as a Nexus 7, but it was also 18 ounces, which probably make you walk funny anyway. That's um, um, half a kilo. Supported, yeah, it supported a 16 megahertz processor. That's megahertz. That's, you know, like it's a demon. 16 16 million cycles a second, which is, you know, like the average calculator. Um, it had one megabyte of memory and one megabyte of storage. Now, given that entire corporations used to run off, you know, 640K floppy drives, um, there was quite a bit of storage, I suppose. Uh, it was based on a DOS operating system. Uh, its external app ecosystem consisted of exactly one program, a PC to Simon texting tool called <laughs> Dispatch It. It cost three thousand dollars for the PC software, oh, yeah. and three hundred dollars for every Simon client. Oh uh, yeah. To be fair, it could do things that uh, modern smartphones couldn't do. For example, you could receive faxes. <laughs> um, it wouldn't print them out though, <laughs> would it? No, they display them on the screen. Which probably one meg. Oh, it was probably that big. It probably did have a printer and a fax roll inside yeah, it. <laughs> Uh, so again? basically, as primitive, as primitive as Simon looks today, it was recognisable as a smartphone. It had an app draw, uh, had touchscreen input, although it was monochrome and a stylus, uh, and it sold via the same subsidised pricing system. It was nine hundred dollars on a two-year contract. There you go. Um, the old Simon. So, eh? Yeah. Geez, look at it. It's a it's a it it's had, a beast. Uh, one hour battery life. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So, you people with iPhones, don't feel too bad. There is a worse device on batteries. <laughs> sure, it's 20 years old, but you know. <laughs> now, um, Frosty, there, there's still still um, maps, Apple map sagas going on. There's still issues yes. with, with the maps and the fallout is continuing and the house of maps is falling down. <laughs> What's happened now? <laughs> uh, the, the bloke that took over from... Uh, Four Whoever. stall. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Eddie Q. Has he been sacked already? No. He has um, 
he has had to sack someone, a supervisor, <laughs> Richard Williamson. You're fine. Uh, in a, <laughs> um, he was uh, part of part of the team that was involved in doing the new maps for iOS six, and looks like he's uh, taken another. He's taken it. He's fallen on, fall. his, fallen on his sword. Now, uh, look, I think I don't know if we covered this or not, but Nokia, you can get that Nokia map app now on the uh, on the iOS as well in the App Store. So that's not too bad. Uh, look, I've been using the Where Is app for us over here in Australia. That's good. And I've got the, get different voices. You got three free ones. I got Gino, Wog Boy. You know, so it's good. And uh, it makes you laugh some of these voices. Eh? You know, you're driving along and when you get to your destination or whatever, just different comments that these voices make. But the where is one, I think, is quite good. Uh, I, if, you, if you need Street View, you can still can you still do Street View in the browser? Or is that... Um, not sure if you can or not. There was some limitation in, with in Google. Google Maps. Yeah. Can you still do Street View in uh, the... I think you can. I think I th- there was some limitation in with the iOS browser. Uh, that you couldn't do. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure now what it was. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Have a look at it does, and find um, out. <laughs> does where is give you street names? Uh, as in, no, it does. That's right. That's, yeah, that's right. Apple has just, they, they've turned on their turn-by-turn navigation. So that's made it that little bit more appealing. So, um, yes, yes. No, where is is not turn-by-turn. Turn. It's not, you know, street name by spoken street names. But, um, oh, okay. Yeah, the map, the iOS maps is is now. So yeah, uh, all right. So what what are, what else have you got, Shane? You had a few going on tonight, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I added a few. Uh, we've done the Adelaide one. Maybe How about down. the HTTP? Oh, you want me to get all technical? Why not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to us. All right. So, a web security policy mechanism that promises to make HTTPS enable websites more resilient and various types of attacks has been approved and released as an internet standard. But despite support from some high profile websites, adoption elsewhere is still low. HTTP strict transport security HSTS allows websites to declare themselves accessible only over HTTPS um, and then HTTPS is just basically the secure version of HTTP which is what the web is built on pretty much. So I think what the, what, what the main drawback of people wanting to use HTTPS is that it's a bit slower but oh god if you can tell the difference you know you're doing better than I can. Uh, yeah. um, so it just means it's a secure connection between your computer and the host computer. Uh, what is it, 128 bit encryption? Will, is that, is that about right? Depends on the certificate you've paid for. Okay, yeah, the base right. 128. Yeah. But that's the biggest problem with HTTPS. If somebody lets their certificate lapse or they've got an invalid certificate or something just goes pear-shaped and the, the certificate server goes down, you can't get on the site. I mean, you can, but you can't go through secure. So mm. it still does have its limitations. Hopefully this new, this new plan they've got will minimise that. But still... Well, if you're relying on on certificates, you're going to run into problems. Mm. And uh, what's this other one you had? High tech solution to block motorists. RAA offers a high tech solution to block motorists using mobile phones. This is the one we needed yep. for the story before. What are the, what, what's yeah. what's the high tech Basically, solution? Yeah, um, technology that blocks mobile phone signals should be fitted to the cars and motorists caught repeatedly talking and texting on the or while driving. Yes. That's the call from uh, head of the Motor Accident Commission as latest figures show that more than 12,000 drivers, 33 a day, were fined more than $4 million each, no, I mean $4 million in total, um, for using their mobile phones last year. MAC Chair Roger Cook said that the uh, culture of motorists using their phones while driving, putting themselves and others at risk. If we don't make a culture change, uh, then the state government will have to consider legislating and getting repeat offenders' phones uh, scrambled. The former chair of the National Road Safety Council said, the phone blocking technology priced at $230 is already being sold in the UK. All right. So, well, phone yeah. blocking, is that going to work, Will? Is that what you need? I hope you never have an accident and need to dial triple O. <laughs> um, hey, did you see, uh, T- was it TPG? They got fined. 
uh, for not apparently not providing triple O access to some of their customers. You didn't see that one? Yeah, but uh, yeah, I was actually reading that then. Um, I, I, I was sort of reading through the story, so I didn't make a lot of sense. But apparently, they fixed that. It was just a glitch. It wasn't mm. deliberate. They, what they weren't deliberately blocking triple O. Um, <laughs> it was. It was just a uh, an issue in in the the way well, they were it's, it's it's no it's a it's a no sure way of increasing your customer base, is it? You're only going to lose customers yeah. by blocking it. But the way I was reading it. I might, maybe I read it wrong, but the way I was reading it is nobody said anything about it. Next thing you know, they just copped a huge fine for breaching the Telecommunications Act. They're like, well, hang on. When we test it, it works. If somebody's having a problem, we need to know about it so we can fix it. Yeah. You know, nobody yeah. bothered to actually yeah. tell them it wasn't working. They just went, here, have a <laughs> next amount of thousands of dollars of fines and mm-hmm. then fix the problem. Yeah. That's crazy. Crazy. So, crazy A triple C or who uh, it is. Yeah, look. I, once again, it comes back to the nanny state, and wherever there's a way to block something, there's a way to override it. So it's completely useless. It's going to be just more of a waste of money. Instead of spending money on legislating this stupid thing, this sort of thing, edu- legislate or sorry, educate and teach people how to drive. If somebody's talking on the phone repeatedly, make them go and sit their license again. I mean, there's mm. a fair chance they won't pass. You know, it, stop basically you know handing people licenses and start teaching people to drive i know there's the whole logbook thing but it it doesn't work it's evident by the amount of horrible not just kind of bad but incredibly horrible drivers on the road you know i i do i average four to five hundred k's a day and some of the stuff you see repeatedly day after day it's like Mm. how do these people even get through a day and make it home you know I oh, know I've been driving on the down the road and people have been coming the wrong way at me. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. I don't know if they're I just know. a whole heap of them, oh. you know. And then on the radio they said there's you know some guy travelling the wrong way. Yeah, oh, it is. It's mad. It's mental. Uh, yeah. uh, Frosty, did you have any more? Or are we coming? Are we come uh, to the end of yours. Yeah, I've got one more. Yo, another Apple story. Oh, good. That's all we need. Yep. <laughs> yes, uh, this one's about. <laughs> <laughs> Taking over for Eric tonight. That's right. Someone's got to. Nobody else wanted to. <laughs> Frosty's the resident fanboy for tonight. <laughs> Apparently, Apple are having trouble with their yields for the iPad minis and uh, for the screens. So right. there's probably going to be a shortage of those. Oh dear. And they seem to be also having mass production issues with. Um, the 21 and a half inch and the 27 inch IMAX yeah, that so were just released, and they're about to be released. I think they they're getting released this week, and I think there's a little bit yeah. bit more expensive than normal than the, the, the previous ones. Yeah. So that does, so what what do you um, run what do you run down there, Frosty? You run and you got iPhones or Androids or and iPads or Androids. Uh, I've got an iPhone 4s at the moment. Uh, yeah. I've ordered a. I've ordered a. Galaxy Note 2. Right. Right. Uh, and I've got a Hackintosh. Right. Which is a normal PC which can run uh, Apple software. And how does that, how, how's the Hackintosh Should work have, for you? Yeah, it works, um, works pretty good. Uh, it's probably 99% of what a Apple um, Mac Pro would be. Yeah, okay. So you can put GarageBand yeah. and, you know, the Apple iLife yep. or whatever it is. You can, run, you can run all the same things that run on the um, Apple on hardware. The Apple. Yeah, okay. Nice work. Nice work. Yeah. For yeah. about half of the price. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, Probably. You, can, you can build some quality little machines and um, mm. actually get a decent performance out of them. Are you getting like, some- Apple do use, uh, like, the... With their Mac Pros, they do use the higher end uh, Xeon CPUs, where, yeah. whereas you can get away with um, using some of the, you know, just your normal consumer grade CPUs and get probably, oh, probably about 80, 90 percent of the performance of what a one of their computers would okay, be. Okay, that's all right. That's not too bad. For about, for probably about a, a third to half the cost. Yeah. Okay. So there's no. Uh, I just ask you: Are you getting any echo back in your ears? Yeah, a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah. I just it just sounds like you're a bit off put by something. But um, oh, I won't ask any more questions. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> You're off the hook. <laughs> All right. <laughs> did uh, Shane? Did you have any more stories before we uh, head out? Uh, that you want to bring up, or touching. that's about it. Done that one. I've done that one. Uh, research. Uh, that's too kind of involved in techie. Oh yeah, I might do this one about Samsung printers. Um, Samsung. I just read that the first time I saw the headline. I thought Samsung printers explode. I'm like, hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what are Samsung uh, printers up to? Sa- I didn't actually even realise Samsung made printers until I found this. Um, Samsung printers contain hard-coded backdoor account. Um, printers manufactured by Samsung have a backdoor administrator account hard-coded into their firmware that could enable attackers to change the configuration read their network information or stored credentials and access sensitive information passed to them by the users. The hard-coded account does not require authentication and can be accessed over the simple network management protocol, which is the protocol that gets used on any any network to do a lot of management and, and monitoring. Interface over the affected printers, the United States Computer Energy Readiness Team, sounds really official, said Monday in a security advisory, SNMP is an internet protocol commonly. I've just kind of explained that anyway. The SNMP account found in the Samsung printers has full read and write permissions and remains accessible even if SNMP is disabled using the printer's management utility. The US CERT said secondary impacts include the ability to make changes to the device's configuration, access to the sensitive information, e.g. device and network information, credentials and information passed to the printer, and the ability to leverage further attacks through the arbitrary code execution. The organisation said that it is not just Samsung branded printers that contain this administration account, but also some Dell branded printers manufactured by Samsung. I suppose that's the problem with things, isn't it? You just don't know what is, what's got these backdoors in it and what hasn't got these backdoors in it. Like, And obviously that backdoor, like, it's called a backdoor, but it's probably uh, just been put there to make their life, maybe as a tech, easier to, um, to to enter the machine when there's a problem with it, you know, and to fix it up. But, um, yeah, exactly. Bear in mind, just, just to make it clear, these printers we're talking are, are mainly massive, big duplexes, big um, full-colour lasers, you know, Corp- corporate sort of industrial printers, big network devices with the uh, the stacking and all that and the sorting. Um, that account they're talking about is there exactly, exactly as you said, Glenn, it's there designed to allow administrative access mainly through manufacturing, um, fault testing, that sort of thing. It also states if you have set one of those up in the user manual that you are to disable that account, and it's very easy to do, is to d- temporarily is to disable it and then create another uh, administration account. So it, it's not really an exploit. It's in the mm. user manual. The biggest problem is so many people don't actually disable it. It's like in uh, when Windows 95 and Windows NT came out and they had the uh, administrator account as default. And people would always create a new account, but they'd never disable the administrator account. Yeah, yeah. They're always fascinated when you could log in as administrator without a password and yeah. figure it <laughs> and figure out why. But even <laughs> even with seven and uh, Vista and seven, like, like I just find it incredible how easy it is uh, to to just to reset the password of the administrator account. So, right. what? Why? Why are they worried about it anyway? Like it's just fairly have, easy. No, if you have physical access to any system, mm. the easy thing to do. Even the, even the tightest lockdown Unix box. If you have physical access to the box and you can throw a floppy drive or a CD or a USB in it, you'll be in it in seconds. So, mm. a device is only as secure as its surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. True. True that. True that. Uh, all right. Will, did you have any more stories? Or that you can remember? Yeah, a, couple, <laughs> a couple that sort of tie in. One ties in what we talked about before about the Bondi Beach uh, Wi-Fi. Um, basically, Sydney's Waverley Council has switched a free Wi-Fi network to visitors on Bondi Beach. Uh, the, the service is being funded by reseller Universal Network Technologies uh, at an initial cost of 35, between 35 and 50000 and a further 25000 a year to maintain. Um, the managing director 
he's a resident of Bondi and he's also a lifesaver at the beach and he's happy to provide the community service at his own cost. Um, basically, it, it's you know, Wi-Fi with a few repeaters spread around backed by multiple ADSL2 um, connections. Um, so, yeah, it's good you know, a good start. And, and, you know, he's obviously the lifesavers are, are voluntary and, you know, he's, he's donating this as well as still being a, a lifesaver. But are people actually uh, using uh, um, Wi-Fi on the beach? You know, like, wouldn't be... They would be. Well, I suppose they would be, but like, it's not somewhere where I'd want to be using my phone. You know, like yeah, sand, a lot of sand down there. Like, if you're taking photos of your kids swimming, you want to upload it to Facebook, or you do it over their Wi-Fi and save mm. you 3G. Because oh, yeah, 3G is so small. But having said that, Telstra unveils its new 25 gig mobile broadband option. Mm. Um, basically, it's their top uh, postpaid. It's called Liberty. Uh, it's... Um, was a fib, was it cost one hundred and sixty dollars a month on a twenty four month contract, or one hundred and sixty five dollars a month on a twelve month contract? Go figure. Um, and basically, that they say we've introduced a new twenty five gig plan to, in response to co- customers' demands. Um, so yeah, basically they just now that they've opened up four you know, G. Mm. Uh, they've had to increase. Got, mm. 25 gig, which should last about six days. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah. Well, 4G's all right. I, I look even being on the coast here, like, I mustn't get out a lot. But I, I don't find there's too many 4G areas. That, that like surface is a, is a good one, as I've said before. Mark gets up, just red hot speed out of surface paradise. Fair dinkum, it's red hot. Uh, look, there's, it's down in Tweed, but it's not as hot as surface. Um, but other places, just just normal 3G. So, you know, that suits me. It's fast enough. And just uh, in case you're interested, they, the 15 gig plan is 110 a month. Uh, the 8 gig plan is 65 is uh, yeah, 65 a month. The 4 yeah. gig plan is 50 a month. And the 1 gig plan is 40 a month. Now, this is only just for the dongles, isn't it? No. It's for everything. They've basically changed their pricing structure now. Uh, and virtually everything is across the board now. It doesn't really change. Um, it's, it can be phones, it can be dongle, it can okay. be, you know, basically any 4G now. Um, mm, that's all right. Obviously, there are plans within that differently. Like, even though a one gig plan by itself costs $40 a month, yeah. Uh, if I bundle it with my phone that I've got and I add one gig on top of my phone, it's only 25. So, do you remember it varies on what you're using it with? Do you remember? Well, I think I well, I think I can remember when I first got the Telstra cable that um, it was it was a 12 gig limit. That was my limit. That was my limit. So really? I, yes. <laughs> so I had to make sure I didn't more, do more than 12 gig. But uh, which I never, because I was a good little boy. But and then it would slow to something dreadful, something dreadful where you couldn't do nothing, and, and you had to turn it off. You had to turn it off, otherwise it just slowed the whole computer down. As <laughs> strange as it is, it sounds. But yes, still, that's right. They still throttle now. I mean, I'm on. We've just changed our plan with Optus because they ditched the plan we were on. They took their one terabyte plan, plan away. Cool, uh, one terabyte. <laughs> which is what I was on. Uh, they took that away with a not enough demand or something. How much porn do you download, Will? <laughs> about one gig, about one terabyte. <laughs> um, one terabyte a month. <laughs> but uh, so we, we decided to change plans. So we picked, okay, they had a 500 gig plan for 100 bucks a month. And they had a um, $5 phone option on top of that. So mm. we'll change to that, and this month's gone through. We've just got the bills. It's two separate bills, two separate accounts, two completely separate departments. Yeah, um, nice. Nobody bothered to tell us, and the 150 bucks we threw on it, we put on the $5 a month phone plan. So anyway, needless to say, I rung them up and went off at them and said, what the hell do you think you're playing at? I, you know, one dead tree bill's enough, not two, because they're not smart enough to have paperless billing yet. Um <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, they put me onto the plan that I actually asked for in the first place. So now it's all back to, to one bill. Good. Yeah. You're a happy little camper? Only, only some of their plans 
are bundled onto one bill. A lot of their plans, you still get one phone bill and one internet bill. Yeah, okay. Well, all mine. I'm, look, I'm just. I think I must be just a, a Telstra whore now. I think I'm just. Everything is just Telstra. It's it's um, uh, T box phone, wife's phone, home phone, internet, cable, uh, dongle. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a I'm a Telstra bitch. I I still. I mean, Telstra is incredibly expensive. Their internet, most of their phone plans are just stupidly expensive. But I use them on my phone because I actually can make a phone call when I need to. That's um, right. That's right. Know. And I remember, like years ago, me and well, Mark and I used to just bag the hell out of them. You know, you know, just oh, crazy. Them. But uh, I, do. I still can't stand them. But but they always did have the best coverage. They always <laughs> had the best service, or well, not mm. the best customer service, but they've always had the best mobile. Service. Oh, they've increased in that too uh, now. Oh, I'm I'm getting happy with their customer service. No, the customer service kind of fell after I left about you know, 10 years ago. Oh, apart from that dip. That's probably what happened. <laughs> yeah. That's what's happened. That's when we were bagging them. When you left, that must have been it. That's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that that's where it all ties in. Oh, I understand. Right. All right. Well, let's get out of here. Will, are you finished? Yeah, that'll do us. All right. All right, so... That's been a, yes, another good show. So that's good. So um, you can join us next week, obviously, at uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live in the lounge, 7.30 p.m. Queensland time. Uh, what else is there to tell you? You can contact us at Glenn, Will, Eric or Shane at aussietechheads.com.au and, or you can get us on the Twitter, which is at aussietechheads, at Eric Franco, Eric with a K, at Mr. Tomkinson and at Shane1973. And that is Shane with a Y. And uh, and thanks to Frosty for stepping in. Thanks, Frosty. No worries. Where are you? There you are. <laughs> his Twitter handle is Frosty F R zero five T Y. That's right. And you remembered? I did. I did. I did. <laughs> I did, I did I rem- it every day for twelve months. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember that one. So uh, sorry, Frosty. But anyway, Will's just given it, and uh, so that's good. So thanks for coming on board and stepping in for Eric. Thank you very much. No problem. And uh, thanks to everyone else out there as well. Don't forget the hosting, uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting. And don't forget everything else, show notes on the webpage. Uh, Garth, got to do some more recordings with Garth. He'll be back soon. And what else is there? So there's, there's probably... The paper. The paper. We did the paper when the, when I, when the Google flung out. And uh, the video can be seen every week off the front of the homepage. So just go to the, uh, navigate to the homepage, click on the video. Do it all. Do it all. Do it all. So until next week, thanks, Lounge. Thanks, listeners, and see you then. Bye-bye.